couch And I'm back to a place That I left a long time ago Just give me a sec While I smoke this cigarette My aching body feels better stored What do you do? A couple of shows ago, a gentleman called in asking about a dead horse in Dogman. This horse's face was chewed on, the genitalia eaten out. Well, you guys speculated whether it was Dogman or some type of cattle mutilation. The reason why I contacted you today is because I've had the very same thing happen to one of my favorite horses, and I can tell you for sure that it was Dogman. Understand, I have 500 acres of land, horses, pigs, chickens, a barn, a full stable, the works. My favorite horse's name was Roosevelt. One evening, we're on the back side of my property. He's tied to a tree. I'm working on a fence, and Roosevelt just goes crazy, bucking and pulling, pops the rope, runs 30 yards over to me, and starts looking at me like we need to go. Now, I'm figuring it's a pack of coyotes in the area because I've had serious problems with coyotes from time to time. But now I notice he's got his back to me, bumping into me like he didn't want to let something get behind him. Now, imagine a scene. That area of my property, there's this trail that you ride to get back up in there. Once you get into that area, it's kind of a horseshoe. There's thick brush on both your left and your right. And my property line actually curves, making a U-shape. As I'm standing there trying to finish making repairs to this fence, Roosevelt will not leave me alone. So I say, okay, okay, boy, you ready to go? We're going to go ahead and go. Listen to me. The minute I mount him, he takes off, falling out of there. I'm trying my best to slow him down, but he's not having it. He runs full speed up that trail, head darting back and forth, looking left and right like he's spooked. So spooked that now I'm starting to get afraid, looking and trying to see if there's something there in the thick brush. But I don't see anything. Now, when we get back to the front side of the property, I dismount him, get him some water, and go to leave. But he follows me towards the house. And right then and there in that moment is when I knew something strange was going on because Roosevelt never behaved this way. He was a stubborn bastard. When we were done doing whatever we needed to do, normally he would look at me like, okay, you go your way, and I'm going to go my way. Leave me the hell alone for the rest of the day. But he damn near followed me to the back door. So I walk him into the fence and let him go into one of the pastures. Hours pass. I'm inside. My wife is cooking supper. It's about to get dark outside, so I head out to stable him. And he's not there. So now I'm on my 4x4. Four four. The sun is damn near gone down. And remember, I have 500 acres of land. And I'm out here looking for him. Listen to me, with any other horse in my stable, I wouldn't even put this type of energy and effort into finding them. I would have let them come back on their own. But Roosevelt was a gift from my wife. And I had a special bond with this horse. Something in the back of my mind told me I needed to go back up that trail where we were earlier that day. And the minute I got on that trail, I get this eerie feeling like I'm being watched. So now, I have my rifle in hand, driving along. I go 400 yards. 450 yards, 500 yards, and I see blood all over the place. Confused, when I come around one of the turns in that trail, Roosevelt is laid out, face chewed off, and there's this giant black wolf standing on two legs, pulling him by one of his hind legs. His genitalia is gone. For a moment there, I found myself in shock, then scared. But right after that, I got pissed, really, really pissed. So I start shooting. I hit this thing twice and it did nothing. It just looks at me, lets him go and starts to head in my direction. So I empty the magazine. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm aiming for its lower thigh. But I swear to you, I must have hit it in its genitalia because it dropped down on all fours and took off running. Now, disappointed, hurt, confused, afraid. Those were all the emotions I felt as I headed back home. I would have never imagined that there was something like this on my property. And there was absolutely no way that I could deal with it on my own. 
So when I get back home, I call my best friend Elk, tell him what happened, and he agrees to go with me early the next morning to retrieve Roosevelt's body. That following morning when we get back out there, Roosevelt is gone. Flies all over the place, the blood done dried up, and swarming on the pieces of his flesh left on the ground. Calling the game warden was Elmo's idea. So we call him. They come out, look around. This man tries to brainwash me and tells me that it was a cougar that I saw. And that's when I lost it. Cursed his out, told him to get the off my property. I know exactly what I saw. It wasn't a cougar, and you can't make me believe it was a cougar. Like I said to you earlier, you could have never told me that I would be afraid on my own piece of land. But ever since these incidents, I don't even go anywhere near the backside of my property. And I used to care about that section of land. People would hunt it illegally. I would have to go back there and run them off. But now, mentally, I have completely written it off. That section of property does not belong to me. It belongs to whatever the hell is back there. And I prefer for it to stay back there than come anywhere near the front side. Where my chickens, horses, cows, and pigs are. So guess what, dog man? You can have all that back there. It's yours.